evening. Today we're going to make um, a very traditional Chinese uh, dish. It's actually called Gui Yi or Su Yi or Tang Yuan in Mandarin. So this particular sort of little dumplings are made of rice flour and it is celebrated during the winter solstice. So welcome to Nonya Recipe. I'm Loretta Lee. And uh, today I'm going to show you how we make our traditional dumplings, which is a little tiny uh, dumpling made from rice, which we used to eat during winter solstice. So it's a very, uh, very um, traditional way of doing things. And uh, when we were young, we used to do it together with my mother when she was around and we were kids. And it's actually quite a family bonding activity that we do. So let's see what is involved in making Tang Yuan. The ingredients are very simple. We need a glutinous rice flour, about 150 grams, and about 150 grams of uh, um, a milliliter of plain water. And we need to make a syrup, which we will use about 200 grams of sugar and some water, about half a liter. And it is so simple. So let me show you how simple it is. So, <clears throat> so I, I think I can make it here. This is a glutinous rice flour. And uh, I just add flour, uh, the water, and then we'll mix it up to get a dough. Let me use a, oops, a spoon to just mix it. So it depends on your flour. If your flour, um, if there's not enough water, you can add extra. It doesn't really matter. And if it's too dry, you can add extra of the flour. So let's see. I'm going to use my hand. is a bit soft but it's okay so you get it until you get a pliable dough yeah a dough that is you can handle and it doesn't stick to your hand so I've added a bit more rice flour it's already done So this is already done so we can actually add make colors with it yeah add color so what i'm going to do is normally in when we were when we were young when i was young we usually have it traditionally it's only two colors one of these is uh, actually one color one is white and the other is like red or pink so um i'm used to, i'm going to use more color maybe two or three colors so i'm going to split this into different um, you know, different containers. Yeah, um, and and white is going to be the big one, which is also known as the mother of the, you know, the balls. You know, e e means round. Yuan in in Mandarin is round. So roundness actually signifies the roundness, the closeness of family bonds. So um, <clears throat> that's the reason of it being, being round. Yeah. So let me see how much do I need. I'll just wait a bit and then I'll show you some more how to make some with feeling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use red colouring. Just a few drops. Okay, just a few drops. And I'm going to mix it up. I've done the pink, so I'm going to do another color. I think this time I'll use green because we like pandan uh, flavor. So I've got my pandan paste. So I'm going to add a bit. Yeah.
So actually, um, winter solstice is a very important celebration in Chinese, in the Chinese culture. In fact, uh, in the olden days, um, winter solstice was actually considered as a new year. But then later on, it was changed to uh, spring. So actually, uh, winter solstice is also known as the harshest winter day you know, of, of the year. And it is also the day where um, the longest night, I suppose, the shortest day of the year or the longest night. And it usually falls around the 21st or the 22nd of December. It's usually before Christmas. And in Malaysia, where I come from, a lot of Chinese businesses will take about a, a few days off, you know, to celebrate uh, uh, this uh, Tang Jie. We call it Tang Jie in, in, in Hokkien and Penang. Okay, now I've got two colors. Okay, so I'm going to cook it. It's very simple to cook and we, we make a syrup with it as well. Okay. But before we cook it, we need to make it into balls. So I need to wash my hands. Okay, I'll Not very wrong. I'll do it again. So now I'll do the uh, I'll do the pink. Okay, we make the pink a bit smaller because that's the mother pearl. This is the little ones. to rub it into a round ball we used to do this in a in the evening and then we'll keep it we all, my mom will take will ask all the kids to help because it's quite a big amount that we do because we have a big family with uncles and all that so we kids will start doing it after dinner and start about nine nine o'clock or eight o'clock and then um Sometimes we'll fall, fall sleepy and my mum will start to tell us stories about her childhood days and that's how, it's a big difference. That's how we come to understand uh, our parents' time, you know, the stories that they tell us. So it's, it's a good place, it's a good time to bond, you know. And we, we do it in the evening because in the morning she has a lot of things to cook the next day. She really has to uh, make a, a substantial meal to... Uh, I wouldn't say a substantial meal, a big feast that we will use the food for our prayers. And then there's a lot of food to be cooked. So uh, by doing it in the evening, the next day she didn't she doesn't have to make this again, you know, because this takes a few hours to do. And prior to having rice flour, we used to grind our own rice flour. We will soak the rice flour overnight. And then in the daytime, after lunch, we will wash and clean it. And then we will put it in the, you know, the grindstone. And we'll actually grind it then, then with, you know, without machine, without nothing. So we call it bo che. It means we sort of uh, turn it round and round, the grindstone to get the uh, flour. Actually, it's not a flour, it's a liquid. We put this rice into the center of the grindstone and we add flour and when we grind the whole thing will flow out and then we catch it and then we'll sieve it and then we'll tie it up and and we will um we tie it up and then we use the grindstone to to you know put on over it so that you'll squeeze out the water and it's in calico bags so we the rice will be uh, sort of caught in the bag itself Whereas the water will, you know, flow out from the bag. And that's how we get our dough. Not like now we can buy everything, you know. So now I've done this. I'm going to do the green green one. Okay. It's not very round, but I'll shape it again before we cook it. Okay. Now it's, you know, it's, it's, it's quite soft. It's a bit oblongish, but doesn't matter. We will, we will sort that out later. Double roll. So I'm going to roll it one more time. Yeah. So... 
then it becomes rounder. Okay. So we've now done all the three colors that's white, pink, and green. And the next one is I'm, I'm going to make the syrup. So once we make the syrup, and then we will uh, cook the balls and then we put the balls onto the syrup. Okay, for the syrup, we will need about 200 grams of sugar. Um, the syrup is not going to be very sweet because I don't want it to be too sweet, but if you want it to be sweeter, it's okay. And we need about half a liter or 500 ml of water. And then for the flavoring, usually we use pandan leaf. And um, my pandan leaf is frozen because I don't normally go to, uh, I don't have easy access to pandan where I live. I have to go to Leicester and sometimes you can get fresh pandans and sometimes you can't. So when I see some, I will, I will actually buy it, wash it, clean it, and then I wrap it one piece by one piece so that I can use it as and when I, I, I want to. So you can actually use pandan or you can actually use ginger. Okay, Ginger, you can slice it or you can actually smash it. But um, traditionally, we always use pandan because we are nyonya and we like pandan a lot. Some Chinese, they use ginger, especially those who are not nyonya and those who are actually like Cantonese or Hakka, you know, so they don't actually incorporate this local, uh, you know, flavoring, a Malay type of flavoring in their food. So I use two pandan leaves. So we normally, um, to get the full flavor out of the pandan leaf, we will normally like tear it, you know, tear it. And because it's very long, we will tie it into a knot so that it will be easier to handle. You can tie it this way or the other way. It doesn't really matter. I think it's a bit too too short. So I will tie it this way. Okay, tie it this way. One knot. And if you think it's too long, you can tie another knot up to you or you can tie two knots together. It's entirely up to you. So it's easier to handle. It comes in a knot. Okay. So we're going to put this in the pot. Let's go to the stove. Okay, I'm going to put half. Okay, I'm going to put half a liter of water into a pot, and then we'll bring it to boil. Oops, I'm going to bring it to boil, and I'm going to add in the pandan leaf as well. Uh, and also the sugar, which you will add. Uh, we will add the sugar as well, so that it becomes a uh, syrup. Give it a stir. When you bring it to the boil, we will lower the heat, and then we let it simmer for about eight to ten minutes so that the pandan flavor can actually you know seep into the syrup okay. it's already boiling so i let it simmer for about eight to ten minutes Mm. You can actually smell the smell of the pandan. It's fresh pandan. It's so nice. So now it's like syrupy and it's a bit like a tinge of yellow color, but it's okay. The pandan uh, smell is coming up to the uh, syrup. We'll, we'll, let it, we'll wait for another few minutes and then we'll strain it and cool it. So now it's about 10 minutes. So I'm going to turn, on the, turn off the fire. Okay, and you can see it's um, a bit yellowish, but it's okay because that's, because that's the pandan. So what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to strain it into a container. Okay, and then we're going to discard. We're going to discard the um, pandan. So now I'm bringing a pot of water to boil because we want to cook it. 
So now you see the water is boiling, yeah? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put in, let's just do three of each. So I'm going to pop this on there. Okay. And make it lower a bit. Just stir it a bit so it doesn't stick to the bottom. <coughs> and I'm going to add another three red ones, pink ones, and then three green ones. Oops. Now when we do in large quantities, we'll do the white together at, at, at once, you know, without mixing with the pink or the green. So what we're going to do is going to wait till it floats up. If it floats up, that means it's cooked. So you see it's beginning to float up. Once it floats up, it means that it's cooked. So you see the smaller ones are floating up now. So, you see all of them are cooked. So, we can scoop it up. Drain it thoroughly. Yeah, and then add it to the syrup. Here we are. It's a small portion, but it's okay. So, this is how it looks like. This is kuei yi or tang yan. And then with this, we actually offer as prayers in our prayers because Chinese New Year is a tang uh, che. It's actually quite a... It's, it's the old, old Chinese New Year. So, we normally make this and we make it as an offering to all the gods, you know, of the house, the heavenly god, you know, the kitchen god, god of prosperity, Goddess of mercy, you know, upstairs god, uh, front door god, kitchen god, back door god. We've got all sorts of gods to protect our homes, you know, and children's god and all those. So that's how we make Tang Yuan. It's very simple. And this is how it looks like. Let me show you. Here you go. Hmm. Okay, now I'm going to try some. Let's try some. I'm eating the ibu. I'm eating the ibu, which is the um, mother, mother of all balls. It's just rice, rice dumpling. And when we were kids, my mom will tell us, "Look, if you eat one of these, you will become one year older." Well, that's true because it's one month before Chinese New Year. So we all kids will love to eat this because we'll be getting a one year older. So we can't wait to grow up. Mm. You can smell the pandan smell. And the syrup is actually not too sweet. Oh, that's my oven. Not too sweet. And it's just nice. And now I'm going to try the pink one. Okay. I prefer the smaller one so it's easier to eat. And then I've got the uh, green ones, which is pandan flavor. Mm. So nowadays, I found out that you can actually use this to cook other things as well. You can cook it with atsuki beans and put it in. And I also have tried cooking it as a savory. So I use these balls and then I use my noodle soup recipe. And it's just a... a, a um, carbohydrates with some vegetables and meat so it's actually tastes nice and later on I'm going to show you the ones with the fillings yeah okay let me finish this hmm. so I hope you find it easy to make this a uh, kuei not kuei we call it kuei because it's like a cake or whatever so this is Tang Yuan or So Yi, which is round and signifies the wholeness of the family. 
and it actually was a uh, Tang Yuan uh, celebration, which is the winter solstice, was actually previously long, long ago in China, was the New Year. And to us, it's, it's like getting ready for Chinese New Year. After celebrating winter solstice, my mom will start making all the cakes and the cookies for Chinese New Year and we'll start cleaning the house, spring cleaning and all that because we have a business to run at home as well. So my mom usually uh, take quite a while to clean up the house to prepare us for the Chinese New Year. So I hope you like it and enjoy. So thank you very much. I hope you like the E and please don't forget to click like and subscribe so that you can be notified of all the new videos that I publish. So until the next round, which I'm going to show you later on uh, in another video, I'll show you how to make the, the Tang Yuan, the Yi, with fillings. Okay then, bye. Ciao, Loretta from Nonya Recipe. Bye, enjoy.